Ready? Chapter three, lesson two, adding integers. Let's talk about your bell ringer, okay? What is an integer? Yes, Jasmine. Positive or negative whole number? Did you do it without looking? Kaylee's like, no. <laughs> absolute value, what's absolute value, Kaden? Yep, the amount of space that something is from zero. What are the symbols for absolute value? Connor. Two lines, right? Two lines. What about ordering these from least to greatest? Jasmine. Very good. Did you think about what's colder? Because that's what I would have done. Which one's colder? Or which one's farther to the left on the number line? That's how you can easily tell if something is smaller. Okay. Any questions on that? Everybody okay on their homework? Yes. It's pretty simple, wasn't it? If you use your notebook, some of you say, oh, I don't remember how to use it. do this. Use your notebook. Your notebook will come in handy for you if you have questions. Especially, let's say you go to study hall, bring your notebook with you. Okay? I can't stand that when people come to the Success Center and they come and say, well, I don't know how to do this. And I'll say, did you look in your notebook? They'll say, no, it's in my locker. And I'll say, that's the first place you need to look is your notebook before you ask me. So make sure you're using your notebook. Okay? All right, so we're going to add integers today. You have experience adding positive ones. You've been doing that since you've been like, I don't know, first grade, two plus two, right? Did you add integers last year? Did you add negative numbers last year? Yes. Okay, a lot? Just a little bit here and there? Okay. No? You didn't? Really? Okay, well, this is going to be new for you. Uh, I'm going to teach you three ways to add integers. I think last year you just learned on the number line. Is that what you did? Did you talk about the number line? You guys are so quiet. You can talk to me. I'm not going to bite you. <laughs> did you learn on the number line? What, else, what other ways did she teach you to add integers? Is that the only one? Yep. Okay, I'm going to teach you three ways. I'm going to teach you one way with the number line if you're used to that. And I'm going to teach you two other ways. Does that sound okay? Okay. So, for the ways that I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you on the number line. I'm going to teach you using tiles. So those of you who like to do hands-on things, this way is for you. And cats and dogs. This is a way to do them in your head without using tiles and without using a number line. Okay? I'm going to teach you all three of these ways. Do I care which way you pick? No, I just want you to get the answer right. So I don't care which way you choose. Some of you might like to use the tiles and after a while say, well, I can do this in my head. Okay, so I want you to pick what works for you. Let's see, what do I got under here? All right, one vocabulary word that you need today. This kind of goes along what we talked with yesterday. Remember we talked about opposites? Remember how we said like negative two, the opposite's two? Okay, one thing we're going to talk about is the additive inverse. And this is basically when you add two op opposites together, you get zero, which makes sense. Because they cancel each other out. So anytime you add two opposites together, your answer is always going to be zero. If I add negative 100 and 100, my answer is going to be zero. No matter what, they're always going to be zero. And that's the additive inverse property state. to the next slide. Good to go. All right, so first thing I'm going to teach you is about the number line. So in your notes, what I would do, I would write number line. And then under that, I would write how to use the number line. Because I'm going to show you three ways. So I want to make sure you have these three ways in your notebook. Because if you get home tonight or you go to study hall and you say, oh, I don't remember what the number line way was, you can look back in that in your notes. 
So this is the number line. And I think more, the most of you are, um, kind of know how to do this already, using the number line. So, all right, so two things you need to know adding a number line. When you're adding in the positive, you're going to move to the right. And when you're adding a negative, you're going to move to the left. And I have some examples up here, and I'll show you how they work. positive, you move to the right, and adding a negative, you move to the left. So I'm just going to show you an example. In one of my examples up here, I have negative 1 plus 3. So on the number line, since negative 1 is first, I'm going to find that on my number line. Okay, so here's negative 1. Oh, there it is. What am I adding? I'm adding 3. Is it 3 positive or negative? Positive. And the reason I know that is because there's no negative. Look, if I'm going to add a negative, it's going to look something like this. Okay? So I'm adding a positive 3. So I'm going to start at negative 1, and I'm going to move three spaces, 1, 2, 3. And when I do that, my answer is 2. Okay? Everybody remember this from last year? Cadence? How are we doing so far? Makes sense. Okay. So let's do another one. Let's say I take... Let's start at negative 7, and we're going to add um, 4. So I'm going to find negative 7 on my number line, and I'm going to move to the right 4 because I'm adding a positive number, a positive 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and where I end up, that's my answer. Fair enough? Okay. And then I would do the same for negative numbers. Let me get rid of this up here. Let's say, all right, here's my problem up here. 3 plus negative 5. Well, I'm going to find 3 on my number line, and since I'm adding a, let me get rid of that, oh. and since I'm adding a negative 5, so let's say I'm going to find 3, I'm going to add a negative 5, so that means I'm going to move to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, my answer is negative 2, okay? I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, because I have other things that I want to show you, okay? Questions on how to use a number line? Okay, I really don't think a lot of you are going to choose this. We're going to go to the next one. We're going to skip that one. We're going to talk about tiles. This is one of my favorite ways, especially if you like to, to move things around. If you're hands-on, this, this way is for you. Okay? So tiles, that's the next thing in your notebook. Tiles. And if you notice, I put some of them on your desk for you, so you can do it with me. Uh, split them up between you and your partner. Or you, can all have, you can have your own. I just put one group on your desk. Some of you need a little bit of red, and you need some yellow. Remember yesterday we talked about negative and yellow, negative and uh, negative were red and positive were yellow. So that's what these represent. The reds are negative and the positives are uh, yellow. And this is also why I asked you to bring some colors because you might want to draw some of this in your notebook just in case you get home tonight and you don't remember how to do this. Okay. Some of you might really, really like this way, especially if you were confused last year. You weren't quite sure how to do this, and the number line was confusing. Some of you might really, really like this way. I remember when I was in junior high and we had to add negatives, I had no idea how to do it. No idea. And I wish somebody would have showed me, like, different ways to do it because the way my teacher taught me, it did not work for me. So that's why I'm teaching you three different ways. All right, so two things you need to know. Can you remember these two things, red and yellow? If you can, you don't need to write it down. One thing you do need to write down, though, is zero pair. This is a really, really, really important vocabulary word that we're going to talk about for the next few days. So zero pair. What it is, it's basically like the additive inverse. And remember when we say you add opposites, they cancel out. That's the same thing as this. Zero pair, a red and a yellow tile. When you have a red and a yellow tile, they cancel each other out. So they're called a zero pair because they equal zero. Okay, let's 
get started. So this says 5 plus negative 3. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at my first number, and it's a 5. Is it positive? Yeah, so I'm going to put five yellow tiles on my desk. And you can do it with me if you want. Okay. And what am I going to add to it? Negative 3. So I'm going to also put three red tiles on my desk. Now, do you see any zero pairs? Do you see red and yellow tiles up there? Do you see some that could cancel each other out? For example, can these two cancel each other out? Yeah, they're considered a zero pair, they cancel. These two are considered a zero pair, they cancel. These two are considered a zero pair, they cancel. Do I have any other red ones that can cancel these out? No, so my answer is positive two. Okay, this is just another way you can visually see what's happening. Okay. Did you guys do this last year? Yes, no, some of you say yes, no, 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 no. Okay. Let's do some more. Whoop. I'm going to go to my next page. Okay, so let's do some of these. I'm going to forget about these for now. Let's do this one together. Okay, so how many yellows are you going to put on your desk? Four. So go ahead and put four yellows. And then how many reds are you going to put on your desk? Five. Okay, then figure out your zero pairs. Take them away, and you're going to have something left over. Kaylee, what do you got left over? One red. And what's a red? Negative. So negative one is your answer. Okay. I like this way. I think this is kind of fun. If you like to move things and do stuff. All right, go try this one. How many reds are you going to put on your desk first? And then how many more reds are you going to put on your desk? Is there any yellows? Is there any zero pairs then? So your answer is negative 5, because that's all you have left on your deck. Pretty cool, right? I love this way. Did I say that already? What do you know about this one? What do you know about this one? What's what? They're all zero pairs, aren't they? That's an easy one. You don't even have to do it on your desk. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do negative six plus. Um, do you have enough for that? I don't know. Do it on your desk. Do it on your desk. Okay, did you have a lot of zero pairs there? Yeah, you did. What did you have left over? Four yellows, so positive four. Okay, positive four. Do you want to write one of these examples down in your notebook? If I were you, I would write a very simple one, okay? Let's do this. I'll make a really simple one for you. Let's do negative three plus four. And what I would do if I were you, I would draw three circles and I would color them in uh, red. Oh, I have a red. Then I would take, do four circles. I believe I used to be able to make this red. Oops. Let's see. Pen yellow. There you go. And then I would show that these two cancel out these and these. And that's what I would show in your notebook. If you want to have an example in your notebook. Somebody like this way better than tile or than number line? I like this way better than number line. I don't know about you. Some of you maybe have it figured out already, and that's wonderful. But some of you maybe don't. That's okay. All 
All right, you ready for my last way? Okay, so this one is called cats and dogs. I don't know why, it just is. It's a way of do using tiles, but using them, doing it in your head, okay? It's a way of doing tiles, but doing them in your head. Why does this not stay? Okay, so things you need to know about cats and dogs. Cats are negative, that doesn't mean I don't like cats, that's just what it is, okay? So cats are gonna be negative, and dogs are gonna be positive. Cats are gonna be negative, and dogs are gonna be positive. I always catch flack for saying cats are negative. <laughs> People always ask me, why do you say that? I'm like, I don't know, it's just the way it is. The reason why I'm going to teach you this way is because when I started teaching, gosh, a few years ago, six years ago, I had a class of students who could not get adding and subtracting negatives. They could absolutely not get it. So I'm like, geez, what am I going to do? So I went to YouTube, and I looked up different ways to teach kids how to add and subtract negatives, and this is one that came up, and I really, really like this. Kids can understand it, and I can tell you a lot of kids could understand it after I, we, we figured out this method. So. Cats negative, dogs positive. So I'm going to just start with the problem. Let's do, do negative 4 plus 7. So how many cats do I have? Four, right? Because they're negative. I have four negative cats. How many dogs do I have? Okay, so here's a little story for you. Some of you know when dogs and cats get together, what happens? They fight, don't they? They, like, run around and chase each other. Unless you have really, like, cats and dogs that, like, like each other, which doesn't happen often. But most of the time, they don't like each other. So, in this problem, guess what? When one cat runs, one dog runs. So if I have four cats, how many dogs are going to also run out of this problem? Four. What, how many dogs do I have left? You just answered it. You just answered it. It's a way of doing tiles, but in your head. Huh? That is simple, isn't it? I wish somebody would have taught me this way. My gosh. All right, let's do another one. Um, let's do 10 plus negative 6. We kind of did this one already. How many dogs do I have? How many cats do I have? Okay. So usually I always start with the lower number. I find, okay, what's, I have a lower number of 6. So how many cats are going to run out of the problem? How many dogs are going to run out? So how many dogs do I have left? Positive 4 is the answer. It's a way of doing tiles. Think about it, because if the cats are positive or negative, those are your red tiles. And if the dogs are yellow, positive, they're your yellow tiles. It's a way of doing tiles in your head. So let's do another. How many cats do I have? How many cats do I have? Do I have any dogs? So guess what my answer is? Negative 12, because that's how many cats I have. Is this not a simple way? A super simple way to do it in your head. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a few here, and I want you to do them by yourself. Does that sound all right? Why don't you try some of these by yourself? Use the tiles if you want to use the tiles. Use cats and dogs if you want to use cats and dogs. I don't care which way you, what you do. If some of them are too big for you, that's okay. Move to the next one. Do some of these on your paper by yourself. want to use tiles, you can use the tiles. Don't be afraid. I'll even let you take them home if you want to take some home. If you aren't sure, that's okay. We're just trying just to see if we can do them. We're going to come back and talk about all of them when you're done.
your time. The one that's probably was easiest was probably this one. Because that's like, you, you've always done it. Right, they're both positive, you don't gotta worry about cats and dogs. Well, you could, you could say I got 35 dogs and 13 dogs all together, I got so many dogs. But I'm assuming you probably didn't do that stuff. Here's a question for you. How do I know what sign it is? If it's positive, that makes sense. How do you know? Can you just look at something and tell, know if it's positive or negative? You can? You want me to teach you a way? I can teach you a way. Look, let's look at negative 15 plus 20. What number is bigger up there? Is it positive or negative? Your answer is going to be positive then. Okay. So whatever number is bigger, that's the sign your answer is going to be. Because that's what you're going to have left over. Right? Like if you have cats and dogs right now, you're going to have one that's left over. Whichever one's bigger, that's what the sign's going to be. So like that first one, I can't really tell it's positive. That second is positive. This one up here, negative 9 plus 18, I can tell that's negative because they're both negative. So you can just automatically look at things and say, okay, I know this is going to be negative. Now I just got to figure out how to get to that answer. So this one up here, I have negative 15, so that means I have 15 cats, and I have 20 dogs. If 15 cats are out, so are 15 dogs. What did you get for an answer, Mr. Augustine? Five. Nice job. Everybody agree with him? Okay. What about this one? How many cats do I have? How many dogs do I have? 60. I know that five cats are going to run out, so are five dogs, so what am I going to have left over? 55. Positive, right? And I, because I know that 60 is positive, so I know my answer is going to be positive. Easy. What did you get for an answer here? 48. Great job. Negative 9 plus negative 18. Are they all cats? That means I have no dogs to chase anybody out. So what's my answer here? Negative 27, right? Good job. What about this one? Negative 2, because I have negative 10 cats, so I have 10 cats, I have 8 dogs. Remember, I always go with the smaller number, because that's what's going to run out first. So I have 8 dogs that are going to run out, so 8 cats are also going to run out. So I have 2 left, so negative 2. Okay. And last but not least, what do you think? 12, positive or negative? Positive, nice job. What do you think? Can you use... Is that easier than a number line? I feel like a number line is really hard to use when you don't have a number line in front of you. When you have big numbers, like I was using big numbers, I don't even on my number line. So that's why I taught you cats and dogs. It's a way you can do it in your head. Do you have questions for me? Do you want a few pra more practice problems? Just see if you can do it? No? You're going to be okay? You got it? How many are you going to use cats and dogs? Not a sweet way. I need love cats. I think that's all I have for you today. All right, let's go check on your homework, and let's see what that looks like. So I don't know what page it is. You're going to have to look what page it's on. Okay. 